We are going to start out this week, week 21, with mineral identification. And I have some fun labs for us to start. So let me go into the details for you and then I will show you an example of the different stations we will have in our science rooms. We are going to be looking at the physical characteristics of minerals and identifying common minerals that we use every day. I'll have stations set up in each science room for us to investigate different mineral properties. Some of the properties that we're going to study are luster, transparency, is it magnetic, and what are the strength and hardness of the mineral. So for our pre-reading students, I actually will have their own box separated for them for their classroom. I think it's important for this age to be able to explore the different properties that are most fascinating to them. So I'll have supplies for them to be able to draw their favorite minerals. I'll have tiles for them to do scratch tests. And I think the most fun for this age group will be looking at the transparency of the different minerals that I'll have with a flashlight to see where the light travels through the minerals. Now a note on terminology, we are not looking at rocks this week. We are looking at minerals and there is a difference. We're looking at mineral properties. So what is the difference between a rock and a mineral? Most people, myself included, have what we call rock collections. Now terminology wise, I do not have a rock collection. I have a mineral collection. There are very few people who actually collect rocks, um, like this sedimentary rock bed. This is not pretty. This is sedimentary rock. What we're actually going to be looking at are minerals this week. So this is a rock. This is a sedimentary rock conglomerate that I dug out of my flower garden when I was planting my daffodil bulbs and I saved this to show to our students. So this is sedimentary rock. It is made up of a lot of different minerals and you can actually see some of them on the backside. There may be a snail fossil or two in there, soil that has been compacted down. It's very light, it's easily breakable. This is a rock. Minerals, however, have a very specific inorganic chemical structure and it's gonna be the same throughout that mineral. All minerals can form crystals. So all of the different minerals that we're gonna be looking at, pyrite, iron ore, quartz, graphite, these are all capable of producing crystals. Now, where it gets tricky is explaining to the students, while all minerals are crystals, not all crystals are minerals. The exception to this is when we're looking at inorganic versus organic materials. So inorganic being a certain chemical structure like graphite, for example. This is an inorganic mineral and it's what we use in our lead pencils. They're actually graphite pencils. Sugar, for example, is an organic compound, meaning it came from another living organism. In this case, it's sugarcane. So while it is a crystal, it is not a mineral. So that is the difference. So all minerals are crystals, but not all crystals are minerals. Regarding crystals, rocks are composed of a variety of different minerals. And in this one, I can definitely see uh, some different luster in this, which is the shininess, the way that the light reflects off of it. So there are a lot of different minerals in this. And a rock is not consistent through its structure. So as you can see, um, and I'll have some of these in the science classroom, this is a lot of different things put together is the easiest way to describe sedimentary rock. You can find the crystalline minerals in the sedimentary, igneous, and metamorphic rocks. For this next section, I am gonna be showing you some of the different tests we're gonna be doing for our ages six and up. These are great to replicate at home or 
uh, for any of the gemstones that you bring back from our field trip this coming week as well. So I'm very excited about that. Um, and again, I dug a lot of these minerals out of my garden. Um, this is a piece of marble that I got from my flower garden. It's decorative rock from Lowe's. Um, and it actually has some beautiful different color compositions in it. Uh, this marble has, it looks like, maybe some pink quartz in it as well. I would need to do a streak test to see exactly what that is. This is the, again, the sedimentary rock that I dug up out of my garden. Um, I found raw tiger's eye down in my creek, which I can't bring that to class. It actually has to stay in a special bag because of um, asbestos. I've been learning a lot about the chemical makeup of different minerals. Raw tiger's eye has not transformed into the tiger's eye gemstone that we know. So if you handle raw tiger's eye, there is a chance that you can um, inhale asbestos from that. For the rest of this video, I am just going to be showing you some of the different tests that we're going to be performing on our minerals throughout the different stations that we'll have set up. Um, the tests you're going to see are going to be for week 21. I may be saving the um, hardness, most scale of hardness test to go along with week 22 where we'll be looking at some different mineral properties. And then in week 23, we will move on to structures. So I'm excited for this three week introduction to rocks and minerals. And I'm excited to share this with our students. So thanks for watching and here's our lab. So the first one that we're gonna look at is luster. Now luster is the way that light reacts with the surface of the rock. So I have a flashlight here. So this is my clear quartz. This is a glassy luster, and I'll pick that up and show to you. You can just see that the weight of the light hits it. It is a glassy luster. Now this is white marble. So the purity of the marble will dictate the luster of marble. This sample that we have is more dull than it is metallic. As you turn it, you can see the light interacting with it, with it twinkling. That is the metallic part of the marble, but it is more dull than it is metallic. Here I have purple amethyst. And you can see as I'm turning that around, right there's a really good light source. It has a very glassy luster. So we've seen glassy, we've seen dull, this is the third classification that we'll be looking at, and this is metallic. It is similar to the glassy with the way that the light reflects off of it. This is pyrite, and it is a metallic luster. So the students will be classifying these, and since we actually have three different pockets here, um, they can classify them as dull, metallic, and glassy. Next, we will be looking at the property of transparency. We'll be turning on the flashlight here. This is a quartz. As you can see, the light comes through that. It doesn't come through transparent, it is translucent. another clear quartz. This one is transparent to translucent. You can see that some of the parts of the clear quartz are transparent, whereas most of it is translucent. Here's our pyrite, which is opaque. The light does not travel through the pyrite. And 
This is opaque to translucent. And fully opaque. So the next mineral property that we'll look at is whether the mineral is magnetic. So I will be providing magnets and some different minerals for the students to investigate. I would like them to theorize which of the minerals they believe are magnetic before they get the magnets out. So this is just a key holder with these are the strongest magnets I could find in my house. So we're just gonna test each one. So you can see the pyrite here is not magnetic. This is magnetite. I'm sure you can guess why it was named magnetite. This is the strongest natural mineral, uh, magnetically speaking, the strongest natural mineral. For the fourth lab, I will have an exploration center. These are some of the rocks the students have already seen or will see again next week. And I would really like the students to just be able to handle, inspect these rocks, and then to draw their favorite one. There are a lot of different properties of rocks and minerals. So this is a rock. This is a sedimentary rock. Again, I dug this one out of my garden. And look at all of the luster on this. Now here is a crystal formation on sedimentary rock. So for this fourth lab, they will just be inspecting. I know they didn't get as much time to look at the different minerals and rocks last time, but they'll be drawing one for this section of the lab. I'll have a similar sheet like this for the students for the fourth rotation here. Um, depending on the number of students you have in your class, you can have two at each station. If you need to put more at the inspecting and drawing station, you can. It looks like my house is starting to turn into a mineral museum. <laughs>